Capacitors work to store energy by stretching the orbits of electrons in a dielectric compound between a positively charged plate and a negatively charged plate. As charge accumulates on the positive plate, the electrons of the dielectric material gravitate toward the positive plate, distorting their orbits. The attraction of the nucleus to the negatively charged plate further stretches the atoms. This process of distorting the orbit of the electrons uses energy that then becomes stored in the dielectric material. A capacitor must be attached to a closed circuit with an energy source, such as a battery, in order for it to store energy. When the switch is closed, electrons flow and charge builds up on the capacitor's plates. This causes the voltage across the capacitor to increase. Eventually, the voltage across the capacitor will equal the voltage of the sources. At this point, the flow of electrons stops because the source voltage and capacitor voltage is equal but opposing each other. The capacitor is essentially charged. All capacitors charge at the same percentage rate. Based on the universal charge curve, after one time constant, the capacitor will have reached 63.2% of its potential, 86.5% after two time constants, and so on. After five time constants, the capacitor has reached 99.3% of its potential and is considered essentially charged. A time constant in seconds is equal to the resistance of the circuit in ohms multiplied by the value of the capacitance in farads. For example, in this circuit, if you have a 1 mega ohm resistor and 5 microfarads capacitor, the time constant would be 5 seconds. Therefore, for each 5 seconds of elapsed time, the capacitor will achieve its corresponding voltage percentage until it reaches an effective charge after 5 time constants. The purpose of an inductor is to oppose any change in the magnitude of current within a circuit. The electrical property that resists either an increase or decrease in current is known as inductance. An inductor is created when an electrical current flows in a wire wrapped around a magnetic core. You may recognize this as an electromagnet represented by flux lines that develop around the core with the formation of a north and south pole at their respective ends. To demonstrate the properties of an inductor, we'll add a resistance, or light bulb, to this circuit. As the switch is closed and the current flows through the circuit, the electromagnetic field in the inductor forms and expands rapidly. However, because of the unique properties of an inductor, as the flux lines of the electromagnetic field expands, the changing current generates a voltage that resists the current coming from the source. The maximum opposition to current flow occurs at the instant the switch is closed. Therefore, the bulb will not turn on instantaneously. However, once the electromagnetic field stops expanding based on the level of changing current, the flux will no longer generate an opposing voltage in the circuit. The current will continue to flow and reach its maximum value after five time constants, or 5T, where T is equal to L divided by R. The light bulb will then be at its maximum brightness. If you open the switch and stop the flow of current from the source, the electromagnetic field will diminish rapidly and simultaneously release stored energy in the form of voltage. It will actually generate enough voltage to cause a spark across the switch as it opens. Whereas a capacitor uses voltage to store energy, the inductor uses current. Inductance of an inductor is defined as the amount of voltage induced divided by the change in current per second. 
Therefore, if 1V is induced by a change of 1A in one second, there is 1 Henry, 1H, of inductance. Transformers are composed of an iron core ring wrapped in coils. One coil is connected to an AC input voltage and is called the primary coil. The other coil is connected to an output circuit with a load resistance and is called the secondary coil. The two coils are well insulated from each other and do not form a physical electrical connection. This gives a transformer its unique electricity altering properties. Transformers can either step up or step down a voltage. In a step down transformer, the number of turns in the primary coil is greater than the number of turns in the secondary coil. In a step up transformer, the number of turns in the secondary coil is greater than the number of turns in the primary coil. The constantly changing current driven by an alternating voltage source induces a changing magnetic field in the core of the transformer. The magnetic field created by the alternating current in the primary coil generates the flux in the transformer core. The secondary coil converts the flux back into current flow and produces a voltage at the load or resistance in the secondary circuit. If there are fewer coil turns on the secondary than on the primary, this is called a step-down transformer. The resulting voltage in the secondary circuit will be less than the primary. In this example, we have 20 turns on the primary coil and 10 turns on the secondary coil. To determine the decrease in voltage occurring in this step-down transformer, we can use a simple ratio formula. This formula simply states that the secondary voltage to primary voltage ratio is the same as the secondary coil to primary coil turn ratio. Rearranging the formula and then dividing 10 turns by 20 turns, we get 0.5 multiplied by 120V. This results in a calculated step-down voltage of 60 volts.